Hello and welcome back to another video. So in this video we will discuss about Symantec web and its technologies. Stay tuned. If you like what you are watching please leave a like and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you get notified each time I upload a new video. You are watching the artificial intelligence and data science channel. Before the advent of the World Wide Web, if you needed to find a reference of a document, you would have to go to a library or try and get a copy of the material that you needed. With the launch of the World Wide Web or the web as it is commonly referred, documents started becoming available online on the web and if a document had a hyperlink, you could just click the link in the document to go to the next document. Or in other words, documents would be interconnected to each other through various links. This was Web 1.0. After this came various applications on the web where you could store and upload your information such as LinkedIn, Facebook, etc. These were independent applications and if you had an account in these and you needed to update your info, you had to update in each app individually as they were not interconnected. This is because even if you have a link connecting our different accounts, our data is not individually connected. This was Web 2.0. So what we are trying to achieve in Semantic Web or the Web 3.0 is to have a connection between the data and information rather than just between the documents. So when a piece of information is updated in a specific web page or document, all the corresponding pages where the data is linked also gets updated automatically. This is also known as the Data Web or Web of Data. Now most of the content of the web is designed for humans to read and not for the software agents to manipulate meaningfully. Even though the agents can pass the web pages for keywords or headers, they have no means to process the semantic information on the web page. This is where the semantic web comes into action. The goal of the semantic web is to make web pages readable not only to humans but also to machines. This would allow the agents to interact with the web the same way as humans interact with the web. In this way, agents would automate a lot of work on the web for humans. The term semantic web was coined by Tim Berners-Lee the person who invented the World Wide Web. It is an extension of the existing World Wide Web wherein we add extra data descriptors to the already existing data content on the web. As a result, computers can make meaningful insights from these data just like humans do. The word semantic implies meaning or understanding of the data. Semantic web takes into account meaning of the data rather than the structure of the data. To enable encoding of semantics with the data, various technologies and standards such as the RDF, Sparkle and OWL are used. These technologies are formally used to represent the metadata. Semantic queries enable retrieval of information both implicitly and explicitly based on semantic, syntactic and structural information contained in the data. Semantic queries worked on name graph, linked data or triplets. This enabled the query to process the relation between the information and infer the answer from the network of data. Linked data refers to structured data that is interlinked with other kind of data so that it becomes more useful through semantic queries. Linked data may also be open data in which case it is referred to as linked open data or LOD. Linked open data enables both people and machines to access data across different servers and interpret its semantics more easily. Linked data is built upon open web technologies such as HTTP, RDF and URIs and is used to provide information to humans and machines. One of the first companies to use linked data commercially is BBC. They use linked data to keep many of the programs related to BBC up to date on their website. In his 2006 linked data note, Tim Berners-Lee outlined four principles for linked data. 1. Use URIs for names and things. This means every web page in material should be identified with a URI. If it does not use the URI set of symbols, it cannot be treated as a semantic web. 2. Use HTTP URI so that people can look up those names. This means that the URIs used should be HTTP URI so people can look up those URIs and get more information about the object in the URI. 3. When someone looks up a URI, provide useful information using the standards RDF Sparkle. When someone accesses the HTTP URI and gets information about the resource, they should be able to get relevant information regarding the resource in the standard format such as RDF or Sparkle, which will enable them to make queries over linked data. 4. Include links to other URIs so that they can discover more things. This means to provide links to related datasets so that more data is linked and more data can be made relatable 
This helps you understand the context of the data better and helps in better discovery of related applications. The idea of this principle is to use standards for representing and accessing data on the web. These hyperlinks connect all linked data into a single global data graph. Similar to hyperlinks on the common web connecting HTML documents into a single global information space. You can find a link to Tim Berners-Lee's link data nodes in the description below. For encouraging individuals and government data owners to move towards linked data, Tim Berners-Lee suggested a 5-star deployment scheme for open data which are as follows. 1 star for the data available on the web, whatever format, but with an open license to be open data. 2 star available as machine readable structured database. 3 star as non proprietary format. 4 star all of the above plus use open standards from the World Wide Web Consortium such as RDF and Sparkle to identify things so that people can point at your stuff. 5 star all of the above plus link your data to other people's data to provide context. This means that higher the star rating, higher the quality of the dataset used. 5 star datasets are intrinsically more valuable because the data within it had been made accessible through the web, has open standards and are linked to one another. This makes application development more cost effective and less time consuming. When we talked about linked data and semantic web, you might have noticed certain terminologies such as HTTP, RDF and URI. Let's look at them one by one. You might already be familiar with HTTP or Hypertext Transfer Protocol. HTTP is a foundation for data communication on the web, where hypertext documents include hyperlinks to other resources that the user can access easily by clicking on the link. The terms URI and URL are used interchangeably, but they exactly are not the same. URI or Uniform Resource Identifier is a web technology to identify a resource such as a page, a book, a document on the web. A URI identifies the resource either by the location, its name or both. URI has two subsets, URL and URN. A Uniform Resource Locator or URL specifies where the resource is available and how to retrieve it. Uniform Resource Name or URN is a URI that uses a URN scheme. In other words, URNs are globally unique identifiers assigned with a definite namespace so they can be available for long periods of time even when the resource they are used to identify becomes unavailable. URNs provide a unique name without a means of locating or retrieving the information about it. A point to be noted is that all URLs are URIs but all the URIs are not URL. Another term which I would like to add to this list are IRI or the Internationalized Resource Identifier. IRI was defined by Internet Engineering Task Force IETF, and it is an Internet Protocol standard which builds on the URI by expanding the set of permitted characters. While URIs are limited to ASCII characters, IRIs can additionally contain characters from universal character set including Chinese, Japanese, Korean and Cyrillic. RDF or Resource Description Framework is a standard model for data interchange on the web. RDF was originally conceived as a tool for modeling metadata. RDF is based on the idea of making statements about the resource of the form subject, predicate, object, also known as triplets. The subject denotes the resource, the predicate, the aspect of the resource and expresses a relation between the subject and the object. As we can see from the example, the subject is John. The object is football and place is the predicate that links the subject and the object. RDF allows for effective data integration from multiple sources. Detaching data from its schema allows multiple schemas to be applied, interlinked, queried as one and modified without changing the data instances. RDF is built around existing web standards such as XML and URL. Serialization is a process of translating data structure into a format that can be stored or transmitted and reconstructed later. RDF consists of different serialization formats. Let us now look at the different serialization formats. RDF XML This is an XML based syntax that was the first standard format for serializing RDF. The main drawback of RDF XML model is that it uses two different concepts that is tree like document and a triple based graph. This makes RDF XML conceptually difficult compared to the other standards. So this model is used only when we need to work with XML. 
RDFA. This is an RDF inside HTML. By adding attributes to HTML elements, you can give semantic context to the content inside the web page. What made the serialization different from the others was that this method combined RDF files with HTML files. This made HTML documents larger and more complicated. Parsing it for triplets was more costly than parsing RDF only formats like intruples. This is used only when we want to add semantics to existing web page or HTML based application. Notation 3 or N3 N3 closely resembles RDF's subject predicate object model. This makes it very easy to understand how RDF works. The drawback of N3 serialization is that it is feature heavy as it supports RDF rules and makes it costly to serialize. So N3 is used only when we need RDF rules for serialization. Turtle TERS RDF triple language uses a syntax similar to that of Sparkle and RDF query language. It is a subset of N3 which makes parsing simpler. It is easy to find libraries for Turtle and Turtle is highly human readable. However, it is still costly compared to N triples. This serialization is used if you need to edit RDF by hand. N triples. It is a subset of Turtle, which in turn is a subset of N3. As a result, you can find many libraries available for it. It is a line based plain text serialization format for RDF graph. N triples was designed to be simpler format than N3 or Turtle, making it easier for software to pass and generate. However, since it lacks shorthand and prefixes, it makes the format very lengthy and difficult to read. N chords. These are like N triples, but they have an optional fourth column which can be used to denote graph label. The graph label often refers to source of data such as the URL of HTML or some external RDF sources. N triples or N chords are said to be highly compactable as turtle or N3 parsers can also be used to pass N triples or N chords as they are subsets of turtle and N3. JSON LD. JSON-LD stands for JavaScript Object Notation for Linked Data. This is one of the most popular ways to serialize data in web application. JSON-LD is a JSON-based RDF format for representing linked data. The syntax is designed to easily integrate into systems that already use JSON and provide a smooth upgrade from JSON to JSON-LD. This serialization is recommended by the W3C Consortium or the World Wide Web Consortium. This is used mainly to improve existing JSON API. Well, there was a lot of abbreviations that we looked into. Let's have a quick recap of all of the abbreviations which we went through, shall we? W3C stands for World Wide Web Consortium. LOD stands for Linked Open Data. HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. URI, Unique Resource Identifier. URL, Unique Resource Locator URN Unique Resource Name IRI International Resource Identifier IETF Internet Engineering Task Force RDF Resource Description Framework JSON-LD JavaScript Object Notation for Linked Data With that we come to the end of this video. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and make sure to subscribe for more amazing videos. See you in the next video.